you need ice cream with me. There we go. Okay. Hey, listen, I could go pour, pour myself a bottle, a glass of wine. Listen, you, I, I you should a hundred percent. We're here with Lori Joyce, uh, and and she runs Life Is Better with Ice Cream, and um, and we're, we're we're jumping on really a reaction to yesterday's kind of fast thoughts on, um, you know, on on Kenny and I posted a piece on on shrinkflation, and and uh, you know, we're we're a little bit excited about, uh, you know how slanted some of the opinions have been on on why brands need to reduce cost and things like that we uh we literally met um lori about 10 minutes ago <laughs> um and we met her on linkedin yesterday uh but but we thought we'd jump on because um you know lori had a, a lot to say like we did uh, about uh price increases and um shrinking packaging and and the kind of responsibility that brands have you know to to their consumers as well so um, and then I, I just want to say that Lori somewhere off screen has some ice cream with her and we're encouraging her to eat it while she's doing her. So, and why are we doing that, Phil? I am why only going to show that if you show your cards, Phil. Oh, you so, guys are, you guys why are, are you going to, why should right, we do right. that, Phil? Okay. So in full disclosure, I'm just going to rip the bandaid off. I'm not a birthday guy, but today's my birthday and Lori <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and which one, I, Phil? Which I, I'm not. I uh, I'm gonna mute Kenny in a second. But uh, <laughs> I turned <laughs> 50, lots of lives in that I turned puppy. fifty today. Um, <laughs> and uh, and so so Lori did give me the gears uh, a little bit because she said she you'd never catch her working on her birthday, which we salute. Uh, I'm just not that guy. But um, I've disclosed why but now i think you should just eat your ice cream while you talk so <laughs> <laughs> well first happy birthday thank you thank you thank you i i feel honored that you <laughs> would actually be working and and um taking the time to to talk about this with me on your birthday because i hell wouldn't be i would be yeah. like I'd be with my family, enjoying my every second of my birthday moment. So we'll make this quick, so you can go back to your family. This is really All fun. All good. Yeah. So so um, so let's talk about this for a second. So so we yesterday we were riffing a little bit, and Kenny and I were um, pretty adamant about our view on um, you know the cost the cost increases that come that are coming that have come, and the things that brands need to do to kind of preserve margin, protect, you know, the communities that they work in, the communities that they participate in, the employees, they have all of those things, right? And and we suggested yesterday that, you know, retailers play a part in this. But I think um, what we'd love to hear, I think sometimes with Kenny and I, we work with all sorts of brands and retailers. And so sometimes, uh, but you you actually have a real life case, right? Where um, you you feel quite strongly about, the things that you need to do to compete and then, you know, what you've kind of got to do and, and how forthright you want to be with the consumer. So, uh, so better with ice cream, which I'm going to dig into right here. What flavor is, my, is that? This is caramel. This okay, is my celebration okay. flavor. This is, this is a beautiful, okay. Okay. sweet, but salty. Um, this ice cream was my first, CPG product into grocery. And when I launched four years ago, naively, I thought I could make the world's best ice cream and create the world's best brand around it. And as long as I retailed under $10, that that would kind of be enough. I, I really, honestly, that was my strategy getting into grocery because I was using the mindset of me being a customer. I'm really brand loyal and anything under $10, I'll try. So especially I'll be attracted to, you know, really beautifully designed or, or mm -hmm. packaged products. And I very quickly learned um, and listened to buyers um, specifically with Thrifty Foods. Hey, and they were like, my flavor that's oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> there I am. <laughs> Please continue. It's your birthday, Phil. It's all good. You're 50. <laughs> So you set the bar low. It's all good. <laughs> Phil, I lost his I lost his attention that fast, right? <laughs> it's the ice cream. I can't help it. It's anyway, please. I, I will not look at other things. 
I really did believe if you're gonna if you're gonna make a product that is a super clean label made with a full fat dairy cream experience that retailing it under ten dollars would be reasonable, right? right. Hagen Dawes is my ultimate competitor, um, and they average anywhere from let's say it can skew anywhere between six ninety nine to eight ninety nine. This is a Canadian product, Canadian dairy. Mm -hmm. Um, actually we result in a product that has less sugar in it because we make all of our flavors from, um, from scratch. So, you know, ultimately it's, it's a better experience. And I felt that that could justify a higher, a slightly higher price point. But what I learned very quickly from the advice that I got is the sensitivity to, um, price points, especially with new products entering the marketplace. And so I listened to the buyers right away and they were like, you need to be the same price as thrift is, as Hagen does. Right. Like if you want to, if you have, if you want to scale this properly, and if you want to have a chance of getting the customer's attention, there can't be any price discrepancy between you and the competitor. It doesn't matter that you're a new product. They don't know about you. So I moved back in with my parents to like sacrifice that decision and was like, okay, I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to price it at $7.99, which I did which did make a difference. And I did that a couple of years ago. But now that I'm in a position as a small business looking for capital, not only do I have to keep my price at $7.99, I have interested prospect investors that are really um, challenging me on making sure that we have a healthy gross margin. So my, my two goalposts as a brand is keeping on shelf at $7.99 mm -hmm and keeping my margin at 50% so I can attract potential <clears throat> investors, right? Right. So this year with the pandemic, um, of course, just like everybody else, we received enormous price increases, everything from our co-packer to dairy mm -hmm. to packaging. And in my category, Hagen dawes and this right now is 500 mils. Right. But in the States, a pint is 473. And so a lot of other products, especially US brands are 473. So I had to make the very difficult, honest decision. Okay, if we're gonna keep the retail price and we're gonna try to keep these investors engaged, um, the only option that we have is reducing the size, yeah. especially if we're not gonna change our product. Right. So we're, gonna, we're not gonna compromise ever on ingredients. And, um, you know, it was so interesting and it was so timely when I watched your episode yesterday, because it was like, this is one of the hardest decisions I've had to make. And, and truthfully, the reason why I wanted to come on here is I wanted to share a message that recently happened to me and hopefully give comfort to other startups in the space. I was, I was losing sleep over this decision. I, I literally thought I was going to be betraying my customer because I hate the fact, you know, you see this all the time, brands get big, they reduce their, their pack size. Right. And um, the most incredible thing happened in the last two weeks with me is that I made the decision to honestly communicate why we were doing this with our distributors and every single one who's um, been helping me all along, they were just like, Lori, do not like lose sleep over this. This is what everyone is doing. Like literally they were like, this is the time to make this change because everybody is doing it. It is so yeah. not a big deal to them that they were like, this is the time that no one's gonna notice that you're doing it. And so not only do I have this support and the comfort from my distributors that are going to help me through this process. Cause there's a lot of change that happens. Like yeah. you change your item code, you change your UPC code. You know, I really, really was um, making me uncomfortable about making all these changes. But then what I wanted to do is own this decision to the customer. And I also feel that we can't rely on the grocery stores anymore to communicate the message, right. especially if you don't have the marketing budget. And so we have to utilize these platforms like Instagram and Facebook and give the customer the decision and tell them honestly why we're doing this. I think that social media is working for us as small business founders in the space. Um, you know, I've never met a founder in the natural food space that wasn't passionate about what they were doing. 
So they're obviously going to be passionate about these decisions. And I think it's such an incredible time to, to own those decisions, be honest, tell your fans, tell your customers the reality of the situation. Mm -hmm. Like I have to keep my product at $7.99 because the customer has told me so, right. you know? So I'm respecting that decision. So it's like, okay, well, if I'm going to keep it at $7.99, I can't but, take a 20% hit. Yeah. And you have pressure there, right? Like, like that's the thing is this isn't about, this isn't about, uh, you know, doing something frivolously. It is about look like I, in order to keep this brand alive, like you have people that work for you, you have, you have investors that, that have come on board. Um, you know, all of these things that you've got to be able to honor. So it isn't, it isn't something that, you kind of just woke up and went, well, let's do this, right? Like, you know, it's, it's, it really is. Uh, quite frankly, really good. What, it this looks really good. Uh, quite frankly, good. I was just going to say happy birthday. <laughs> yeah, it looks really good. But, you know, quite frankly, I'm, I'm actually surprised that you only, and I mean, the seriously only yeah. have to do a 27 mil reduction because I know where dairy's gone. I mean, I've, I, I, there's nothing that hasn't been hammered by cost increase right now. Like there's nothing. Like people just see gas and then they piss and moan about maybe some retails and the stores have gone up. Well, there's no doubt. The amount of, the cost of goods of everything we do is huge. Like I'm surprised you're able to do it there. I would have thought you would have had to go 425 or 450. Oh, just I'm, to I'm still maintain profitable. Hit. Yeah, no, no. I'm I'm still taking a big hit for sure. It's only a it's only a five percent difference on the grocery. I know, but the cost of goods have gone up way more than five. Oh, 20%. You know, so and again, that's a part. I, this is the part that I think agitated the hell out of Phil and I is that there were so many comments, and it was this, yeah. this, you know, the, this nefarious group of people who were out to screw the consumer by going out and reducing things. You're thinking, God, people, do you not understand? But this is the way I think of the media, and this is what, to your point. I'm really happy you said it. Where you know, as an industry, as us, as as vendors or communicators like Phil and I, is really try to explain better to people what is really happening. Like what you see on television and now shrinkflation. Like, why don't you try to explain why this is happening as opposed yeah. to making it sound like there's this demon named Lori Joyce who's just out to kill people by screwing them for 27 mils. I, like, I, come on. I think the I, I, I think the other part of that too is you, you think like in, in your case too, you know, like we're, we're betting on brands that are are raising you know or or shrinking because they've they're trying to keep a promise to a consumer and they're trying to keep you know uh they're they're trying to keep the brand alive they're trying to make margin and make things work you're still like i think the part that even the consumer doesn't understand right is like the consumer has a definitive point right so when you walk into a store i had a hundred bucks yesterday i have a hundred bucks next week i have 100 bucks every week for groceries right so i'm going to manage that number for for anyone who's manufacturing there's no there's no uh the fluctuations to the costs that come in are every day right like i mean you you like kenny and i use the example year. of of a container a shipping container a shipping container went from four grand to like 20 right and and you didn't have a crystal ball so nobody knew it was going to get to 20. you just like the first time we went up, you went, all right, you know what, we're, we're not going to, you know, we're, we're going to soak up the the cost increase and we'll, we'll just, we'll figure out how we even it out in the business. The second time you're like, oh crap, like, I, I don't think we can, <laughs> you know, the third time you're like, we got to raise rates or we got to fire people, right? Like, you know, the fourth time you're going, I don't know if we can even bother bringing this stuff in anymore, right? And so you've got, you've got wildcard things like gasoline and, and cold chain you know, like things like, cause your ice cream is expensive to ship, right? Like it's got to go places in refrigerated trucks and all that kind of stuff. Refrigerated trucks cost none a of, lot of money. None of that truck. stuff is like stable rates, and, right? Like in the first year that we launched, there was a massive worldwide shortage of vanilla, right? That's so right. four years ago, wow. I, I entered the market and vanilla with every ice cream brand is generally the number that's the most yeah. popular. Yeah. And so, if, so you can't really launch an ice cream brand without vanilla in the grocery store. And uh, so that was the, that was my first experience with supply chain and um, major unexpected yeah, yeah. challenges with pricing. But, yeah. but, but as you said, like I made a promise 
when I produced this product, the promise was I'm going to make the world's best ice cream. And I think that is the most important thing versus how much volume it comes in. Mm -hmm. right. right. So if you want this, you're going to have it a little bit smaller. And, you know, I'm not, I don't actually have shame in this, but yeah, in order to absorb that price increase, I moved home. I moved back in with my parents because I think this is temporary. I think that as I grow, that margin is going to shift. So I really need to focus on volume and scaling. Scaling now. Right? right. Um, and that's that's what I'm focusing on this year, which is why I was doing the, the fundraising. Mm -hmm. But um, what I can't afford to do is compromise on my product mm -hmm. and make changes, add air, change the ingredients, use less quality ingredients, because that's like yeah. I couldn't face my customer if I was well, doing exactly. that. that you and that's way worse than shrinkflation. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Call this yeah. In, exactly. And so yeah. my yeah. point is, is that we have like when I started my first business, which was brick and mortar cupcakes 20 years ago. Am I supposed to tell us that part? That's the podcast. Oh yeah, Lori's coming back for podcast. This exactly. Is the... Lori's gonna tell her whole story now. You're not allowed to do that. <laughs> oh, la, 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 la. <laughs> Fuck. Hey, a long time ago, before Instagram. <laughs> so you know, the Instagram is such a powerful medium to communicate right. not only behind you know what we're doing right and i think yeah. that it's so great that we need to leverage that more and more and more and i want to see founders doing that because not only is it cost effective but it the most powerful thing about it is that when you're telling the message it's consistent right so when you tell the message from your voice as for like why you're doing it that message is going to come out honestly and consistently and and that's gold when you're small absolutely we just need more people to do it yeah, right yeah. now yeah, so yeah. that people understand yeah. what you know the other side is sort of going through and it's not yeah. a, again a demonic side because you know, I, I everybody think wants get to it, eat right? like, family. Like everybody you, wants we, to eat we know like your grocery bill every week everybody's bills have gone up and then and then you know, I don't think I get a single call, you know, from friends going, oh, I just spent all this money. I don't think I got very much for it, right? Like, so we feel it, right? So it's it it's not um, it's not a, a leap for people to go, yeah, you know what? It actually costs, not only did it cost you as the consumer, but it, it costs the suppliers, right? Like, right. you know, as we're making this stuff, it, it costs more to make it. So we, we got to figure out how to do this, right? So, right. Um, Lori, thanks. Thanks for coming on. And then we I... can't wait to have you on the podcast, like for real. Right. So we're going to do an episode with you and get your, your you need to book story. a time with you once we get off yes. this recording, yes. this. we'll book a time and let's yes. light this thing up. Yeah. The priority yeah. is it's your birthday. Happy that is true. Birthday. And Please a big one. You guys are yeah. the best. A big in the birthday, worst. Lori, a big birthday. You, you know what I'm going to do now? Because Kenny, Kenny is the one who kind of broke the news on this. I'm actually just going to cut him right out of this interview and it'll just be Lori and I. <laughs> That's so mean. You know? Daniel's here listening to this and he's not going to be happy with Paul Chang. Daniel will agree with me. He's a good boy. Uh, you guys, this was so much fun. I can't wait to see you guys again. Um, yeah. We'll do it in person if you want um, with ice cream, whatever you like. But please, it. just you know, I if I can it. just say um, you are like, I, I, I know we talked about this briefly and we made this joke because I, I really do celebrate my birthday and yeah. um, I think it's really important. And yeah. I know we just met, so it's probably super inappropriate for me to say this. However, I always put my foot in my mouth, so nothing's gonna change. I'm gonna say it right now. We love you already, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> you have another half of your life to shift that mindset. You are healthy, you have a family, like, that like, we are living in the most fucked up time ever. Literally, that's what it seems <laughs> like. Yeah. So yeah. ice cream and birthdays are what yeah, we can count on. Yeah. No, no, right? I, I, like, listen, I, I, I just, yeah, no, I just don't, I don't do the whole, you know, the birthday day, right? But I, I, I live pretty full, you know, like I don't, I don't really, I don't really hold back. Kenny will tell you that. I don't, I don't really hold that's back. All good. One I'm day, saying. for one day, Phil, you can make it about you. <sighs> exactly. <laughs>
Yeah, some other well, day. Start the recording down. Lori, don't leave. <laughs> thanks okay, for coming on. on and thanks for giving your side of the story so people do hear, you know, that there's, again, not a nefarious side to shrinkflation or whatever mm-hmm. else is called. So I appreciate I it. I just, I hope that I encourage and I inspire people to, A, know that distrib- if they have a great product, distributors are there to support them. And if they communicate and own the decision, I believe that their customers will not only respect it, but will totally appreciate it. I agree. I think that customers are just really like retailers are not leveraging that massive footprint that they have to properly inform their customers. You know, they're just literally um, rental rental spaces for us. And, um, you know, so it's like, we need to do that job. And, you know, social media is the perfect platform to do it. So I, I will be doing that um, very shortly when we're closer to launching. Not only am I doing it, but I'm, I'm spending an excessive amount of time in stores doing demos this summer oh, wow. to also yeah. communicate them yeah. and be like, yeah, this Good is why you. we're doing That's it. That's amazing. Awesome. That's amazing. Okay. I got to.